you are a film shooter, you've probably noticed that the more you shoot film, the more your film negatives start to stack up. And if you do struggle with uh, knowing what to do with your film negatives and whether you should be keeping them or throwing them away, this video is for you. So in this video, we will be talking about the reasons why we archive our film negatives and how to organize them in a way for easy access in the future. If you want to see more information on photography and business and beauty and a little bit of my life through the mix, you can subscribe to this channel, hit that bell notification so that you get notified every Friday at 9 a.m. when my videos go up. Okay, so let's give a little backstory before we jump into the meaty part of this video. So back in 2018, particularly the summer of 2018, I actually bought all of my own equipment to develop film in my own home. So after discovering that, you know, I could shoot all the film and develop it in my own home, I then started to realize that I was accumulating way too many film negatives and I didn't know what to do with them all. And I had all of these boxes that were just a chock full of film negatives that were sent to me from my lab. And for the longest time, I didn't really know what to do with them. So I kind of just stuck them in a box in my garage and they collect dust for a really long time. After a while of them collecting dust in the garage, I knew that I needed a way to keep them organized. And I knew that I needed a way to organize all my film negatives in case I ever needed to access them in the future, especially because I had bought a film negative scanner. And I wanted to go back and kind of rescan old work and see how it looked. And that is exactly what we are talking about today. Today I'm telling you all about how I organize my film negatives so that you can organize them too and they don't have to sit in your garage and get dusty like mine did for so long. <laughs> so before we jump into, you know, the how of organizing our film negatives, let's first talk about the why. Why do we archive our film negatives and what does the word archive actually mean when it comes to film negatives? So archiving basically is using tools and methods to keep your work at its purest and most stable form. So in, when we talk about film negatives, it is keeping our film negatives in a way where they won't get ruined, where they are preserved nicely for future use. And the reason we archive our film negatives is very similar to why we would back up digital files on a digital camera. It's so that they are protected. So at its rawest and purest form, they are protected for whether you just want to use them in the future or just to have them as a backup. And so that's really basically the the premise of why we archive our film negatives. Okay, so now let's jump into the materials that you actually need to start archiving your film negatives. And you only need three things. I know, it's really simple, trust me. Okay, so the first thing that you need is you need a binder. I got mine at Walmart a couple years ago at like a back to school sale. And I just got like the really big ones, like the two inch binders, because I really wanted them as big as possible to be able to shove in as much content as possible. And then the second thing that you need is film negative sheets. Now these are just plastic sheets that you slide your film negatives into and they keep them safe. And then the third item is a Sharpie pen because you're going to need to write on your film negative sheets and you need to do it with a Sharpie pen otherwise you're going to get a smudgy smudgy mess. Speaking from experience here. And there's a fourth bonus. You don't have to have this but it is nice to have is cotton gloves because when you are in the process of putting your film negatives into the sheets sometimes your oily fingerprints can touch on the film negatives and you can get a fingerprint on them. So I highly recommend to just use cotton gloves when you're handling your film negatives. They are very delicate and to keep as much oil off your film negatives as possible, I use cotton gloves. I just bought like a cheap pair off Amazon. It's easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Question time! Do you think you should save your film negatives or even like your digital files after you've shot images on your digital camera? Do you think there is a use for saving your images or do you think they should just be discarded to, you know, save room? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and let's build a community here on my channel. Okay friends, so now we've talked about the reasons and all the materials that you need. Now let's jump into the actual how to archive your film negatives. So as I'm sure you can assume, it's pretty easy to, you know, 
archive your film negatives and keep them organized, especially when you're only using like three things for the whole thing. So let me pull up my binder and let me show you. Okay, so this is my binder that I use and I have two binders, I bought two. I bought one for personal work and then I bought one for client work. I wanted to keep personal and client work separate. So I bought two binders. You don't have to do this if you don't want to, but because I shot film in my business for so long, I thought it was necessary to kind of keep them, you know, separated. So I just put a little sheet that has, you know, the years of when I shot. So this was from 2015 to 2019. I haven't shot any film in 2020 yet, so I, you know, haven't archived anything from that year yet. So what I do is put everything into a category by year. So everything in my binder, so, let me just pull up my handy dandy binder. So I go from the latest year to the oldest year. So I go from 2019 to 2015 being right here in the back. And then that's it. And I just use like a sheet of paper in between each year. So let's, that is all, actually my bad, my mistake. That says 2019, but I did not do any film client work in 2019. Here's 2018. So. This work is all 2018, all of that right there. I shot quite a few weddings in 2009, or 2018. Wow, pull it together, Sam. I haven't been drinking, I promise. Okay, and then like here's 2017. So yes, I put everything by year so that I usually have a rough estimation of when I wanna go back and relook at something, I'll know what year it is. This is also how I organize all my files on my computer as well. I do everything in a specific folder, whether it's for personal or for business work, and then I do everything by year. Okay, and so mostly that is the bulk of what you put in your binder. Now, when it comes to the film negatives, like the sheet, I actually write very specific things at the top of every single sheet. Okay, so all of the items that I put at the top of the film negative sheet is the event name, whatever it was that I was shooting, you know, whether it was a wedding or, you know, a, a personal project. I will then put the date or the date of when I, sometimes I can't remember the very specific date of when I shot something, so I will then put the date of when it was developed or when it was sent to my lab. Then I will write which film stock that I use. Now, this is kind of a tricky one. Sometimes it's hard to remember, especially if you've shot so much at a particular time. And if you're going back quite a few years and you're just now starting to organize your film, it can be a little tricky to remember the film stock. And you don't have to do this. It's just more of a personal preference. Sometimes I will have done a shoot where it came out really particularly beautiful in this particular light or the setting, and I just like to know what film stock that I shot, so that if I ever get the chance to recreate that or reshoot that, I'll know what to shoot with. And then last but not least, I will put in camera information. So things like what camera lens I used, what camera body I used, all of that information so that once again, I have the freedom to be able to recreate or reuse that in a specific scenario if I like the outcome of what was on my film negatives. Okay, and I, as easy as that is, that's it. That's all that you have to do to archive your film negatives. When my binders are done and I put all of my film in that, I make sure that I store them in a cool, dry place. I typically will leave them in our basement and sometimes I'll leave them in my office, but you know, on warmer days, I make sure to leave it in my basement. Don't leave it in your dirty garage the way I have. <laughs> be better than me <laughs> but yes just store them in a cool dry place and keep them for whenever you need them again and that is it how crazy easy is that right the really the only thing that you have to set aside is time it does take a lot of time to go through look at all the film negatives and then if they're not already in sheets because like when I get film film negatives back from my lab they already come in sheets when they develop them, they just immediately put them into sheets and they will just send me a huge stack of sheets back to my home. But if you're developing film on your own or you don't have a lab that does that, it can take a little bit of time to actually go through all your film negatives, make sure you cut them properly, put them in the sleeves, write on all the sleeves and put them in the binder. It's definitely kind of like a day project. But that's kind of what I did. I ended up putting like a movie on, putting everything on my bed and just going through it and organizing everything and kind of just, you know, making a day of it. So now you've learned all about the importance of archive our film negatives and how to organize them to be able to find them in the future but when it comes to actually shooting film do you ever wonder what kind of film stock you should shoot 
if you are in that boat, I have written a PDF guide that takes you through all of my favorite film stocks, the best places to use them, and where to buy them. If you are interested in checking out that guide, all you have to do is click the link in the description box, sign up for my email newsletter, and it will be sent directly into your inbox right away. And then you can just go out and shoot all the film and be awesome. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up and comment down below what your biggest takeaway is. Let me know if you have already archived your film negatives or if you ever intend to or if they're still in your garage like some of mine are. Just speaking the truth over here. <laughs> Thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to watch my video and I will see you in the next one. Uh, how to organize an archive. No. Stupid. You can subscribe to this channel and be <sighs> My kids just are so loud. My ear itches. Stop. And I had had all these boxes. Excuse you. <laughs> so I knew I needed to organize my films. I'm all frazzled because the kids won't stop talking. <laughs> what was I saying? So, 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 no, 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 Santa. No, you don't even know what you're saying, Sam. Oh my gosh. God, my head hurts so bad. I think it's this ring light. It's just blinding me. It's blinding me. If you liked this video, give it a big don't do that. Don't give it that. <laughs> so dumb.